Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Wednesday night live stream. As you can tell from the title of this video, we are going to be converting some Tyranids today, and with the added challenge that I've set myself of converting a plastic lictor using just the parts found in this kit here. And this is the Tyranid Warriors kit, and it is pretty much your standard kind of basis, genus, whatever it is in Tyranid lore. I'm not particularly clued up on Tyranid lore, but um, I'm only going to be using parts from this kit. I'm going to use all the various different weapon options. I'm going to cut things up. I'm going to adjust things, and we're going to see if we can build a plastic lictor. So as always with these live streams, um, ask me your questions in the chat, and um, I'll keep glancing at it as I do, and then I'll hopefully try and answer your questions. And before I go on, let's just say a big praise bits box, our Lord and Saviour. Um, and that is requested by Adam Rafalski. You did ask me to mention it in the last stream, so uh, thank you for that. So, um, the thing that I've done so far is I've basically gone ahead and just removed some of the components from um, the Tyranid Warrior Sprue. And I've basically removed enough of the all the components required to build the basic structure of it. So, let's just move everything else that isn't really the basic kind of structure we can get rid of these for the time being so what we have here is we have the torso parts we have the two legs we have the tail and we also have the head now what we want to do is we need to adjust these in a way just to give us something that's close enough to the body of a lictor now if i just take these out for the time being and we're going to start from the bottom up we're going to start with the legs here now if i just use these guides and attach them to here, then one of the things you'll notice straight away is that we kind of have a slightly, um, this leg's not too bad, but this one a little bit more so, you kind of have a slight lean forward. And what I wanted to do is to try and adjust the, the pose slightly, just so we have more of a vertical uh, appearance to it. So one of the things we need to do first is to actually bend this tail. Now I was gonna use a lighter for this, but unfortunately it wasn't working. Um, so I'm gonna to have to use it by hand. So if you, if you have like a tea light or you have some uh, sort of heat source then you can probably, actually I do have a hair dryer. Let's see if I can use that. Is it already, yes, it's already plugged in. We're gonna use the hair dryer. Um, so hopefully it isn't too loud. I'm gonna hold it away from it. I'm just gonna warm this up for a little bit just to make it a little bit more pliable. So whilst I'm doing this, um, hair drying does take a little bit longer, but if you use something like um, like a torch, like a match or something like that, you can run the risk of melting things too much. We only want it to be heated up enough so that it's slightly more pliable. I mean, that hasn't really done an awful lot, but it's made it a little bit more bendy. So we're gonna bend it around just a little bit just to see if we can get a little bit more flick to this tail. It's not a massive problem if we don't because we can kind of adjust it later on. So now that we've done that, I want to make the legs a little bit more vertical. So if I use the um, the guide here a little bit further forward, but I want them to be a little bit further back like so. And I'm not going to be able to do that with these little knobs here. So first thing we need to do is clip those off. So let's have a look at the comments whilst I'm doing this. So what everyone is up to this evening. Bar Blah Flarkle Face 19. Hey Pete, I watched your videos on how to batch paint Clamorats, which I'm doing right now. Have you ever considered doing a stream where you make 40k Skaven Soldier? That'd be cool. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. I know um, uh, Mantic Games for their um, is it Dead Zone, I think it is, a Dead Zone Warpath range, uh, they have kind of like a vermin based kind of 40k race. We also have like a squat race as well called the Forge Fathers. But yeah, that's quite a nice idea. It'd be pretty cool to see. It, maybe for like something like um, like a Necromunder thing or some Abhumans, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've just kind of clipped off those little nubs and I'm just shaving them down. And this is going to give us a little bit more freedom. So if I just bring this leg up to here, we can see that we can, we can have a bit more of... Um, taller pose first of all. Now one of the things that actually I wanted to just 
let's see here, there we go. So just bring in a picture of the lictor actually, just so we can uh, talk about it. So you notice one of the things here um, is the lictors stand a little bit taller than obviously the warriors that we've got here. So I'm just trying to recreate that pose. These guys are a little bit more hunched and it's just a very simple thing that we can do and it will just have, hopefully um, give us that lictor appearance. So the trouble is by cutting off those knobs, we don't get an, a fantastic join. So just to strengthen that, I'm just gonna take a, a uh, this pin vise here, this little hand drill, and I've got a one millimeter bit in the end there, and I'm just drilling straight through the center. Then I'm going to take some of this wire, and I'm just going to pop that through the hole like so, and get it lined up properly. And this is basically gonna be kind of like um, an axle, I suppose. <laughs> Um, although the legs won't be spinning around in Sonic the Hedgehog style. Can I get that in there? It should fit. It's trouble using a bit that's the exact same size as the wire you're using. It's a very snug fit. So I'm just going to just make the hole a little bit bigger like there. And there we go. Okay, so now we've got it going through. We can just clip that off and we can adjust the length later on. So we're going to keep that to one side for the time being. And we're just going to drill some small holes into here. Now this process is called pinning. And it's something I should probably do more of in my conversions. Um, it's something I often forget. And it just means if you've got a very a quite a precarious joint, you can basically um, strengthen it. You can reinforce it. It just prevents the possibility of you accidentally bumping it. And then the pit's, the pit's just kind of flying off. I mean, it's happened to me plenty of times. Right, so we've got some holes in there, and we're basically going to use these just to offer us a little bit more strength when we add these legs onto them. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is just to glue this little bar in place. At the moment it's moving around a little bit too much, so let's just pop that out for the time being. Add a little bit of super glue here, because obviously we're gluing metal to plastic, so we need to use a super glue and not a plastic glue. Let's try and get that back through that hole. Oh man, I can't get back through there now. You think this should be fairly straightforward and simple? There we go. Okay, so hopefully enough glue stayed on that. And I'm just gonna bring in one of these legs and I'm gonna add a little bit of super glue into this hole here. There we go, like so. So I should probably explain the premise of this video a little bit more as well. So the title is called One Kit Conversions and the reason I've kind of set the challenge for myself is mainly because of the fact that I often end up using components from lots of different kits. And I'll usually use like a base kit and then kind of add extra bits from other kits to it. Um, but sometimes it's quite difficult for people to get the hold of all those extra bits. There's, there's really great places like Bitsbox and things like that, but sometimes they don't always have the stock and sometimes um, you might only need a few, if you want to do like a larger force, then often you end up needing to buy in quite a few bits and it just doesn't often end up being economical enough. So economical enough, I can't speak this evening. And I just wanted to see if I could do conversions without the need to use parts from other kits and source parts from dozens of kits. Just use what's on the sprue. I just grab a multi-part kit with some good options in there and just use what's on the sprue. That's a little bit too long, that wire is. That's going to cause problems. Let's just trim that down a little bit. And if this video goes well, if I actually manage to succeed in creating a passable lictor, then I will be looking to continue the series. So if you have any suggestions for or challenges, then feel free to let me know. So whilst I wait for that to dry, let's see if any, has anyone asked me any questions in the comments? You should have rounded the knobs rather than cut them by Colin. Um, yeah, I could have done, um, but I think, to be honest, just by, doing, just by doing the pinning here, I've given myself a fairly decent structure and actually that's glued really nice and solid now. So the leg, is a little bit more upright and 
I was hoping to have this bent around a little bit more, but that's fine. We can we can work with that. We can basically just mount this guy onto a piece of rock if we need to. So we can go ahead and start working on the torso. So first thing I'm going to do is to actually the first thing I'm going to do is if we just bring it now lictor again. You can see here that if you look at the shoulder pads, they're not quite as big as these ones here. They're not as pronounced. So we need to shave these down just a little bit. Now this kind of thing is a little bit trickier with more organic kind of miniatures because when you're using um, like Space Marines, things like that, where you've got armor, you can cut the segments off, you can adjust them quite easily, but these you've got to make them look realistic or at least realistic in the terms of 40K. So I'm just going to clip these off. I'm going to clip them off in line with the rest of the body. And that's just going to be the start of this here. Although saying that, saying that organic things are a little bit trickier, they do, you can kind of smooth things out and you can kind of get away with things a little bit more. Let's use a file just to quickly smooth these down. So I'm just going to round these corners off just so they look a little bit more like the carapace rather than just missing sections. Just clip that off a little bit more. I don't think I quite clipped that off quite as much as I should have done. Round that off, and okay, we want it just to look. To be honest, the arms will probably cover most of this anyway, so it doesn't look. It's not too bad if we if we don't get it perfect, but we just need to have something a little bit more feasible. Round that off here. To be honest, it's quite unusual to do something, uh, to be doing a conversion this organic. Most of my conversions end up being um, based around humans, and then changing things like their technology and mutations which tend to be quite easy to do but doing something like this where you've got to have it so that it still looks anatomically correct based on the rules of that particular race is a little bit trickier so and it's a little bit out of my comfort zone but you know what it's 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 good to kind of challenge yourself sometimes with these conversions just to see what you can do and you know if it doesn't work out then that's fine so if we bring this in here we can see there's a little bit of, of um, obviously this little section here so we just need to cut those off too and I'm going to cut them off just in line with the top of the carapace for the time being. And then we can make some adjustments as we need to. So I'm just going to kind of point these out down to the collarbone like that. And again, we just need to smooth these sections out again. So, is everyone looking forward to, now that we actually have a release date of the 25th of July, is everyone looking forward to Indomitus? There's going to be lots of cool conversions that are coming for that, I can, I can promise you that now. Lots of stuff planned. Okay. Okay, so we've smoothed it out a little bit, and we can glue these together, and if Let's just adjust that slightly now that we've got these two components together just to make sure that the smoothness flows around. There we go. Same for this side. So another reason I want to do this as well actually because it's obviously a one kit conversion, I wanted to um, do something which is also helps to save some money because sometimes a little bit too much glue in there. Um, sometimes the conversions can end up costing you more than they would be um, just for doing something normally. Like if, if you were to follow my Imperial Fist video, then you would probably end up spending more money than if you just assembled intercessors. But this conversion actually would save you a little bit of money. I think three Tyranid Warriors is about, on the Games Workshop website, is about £32.50 and a single fine cast lictor is about £15.50. So with the set, I'm hoping that the components I use, and because I'm using components that there are multiples of, then you could assemble three lictors from a single box of warriors. So you're actually saving yourself a little bit of money there. Okay, so now the torso is assembled, we can start bringing it in against the legs. And again, we want to keep that verticality. Now, the problem here is if you look at this piece of carapace that I've got, 
that's going to be bumping up against this little knob here. So we need to clip that away. Let's clip this top one away. And then we're going to just smooth it out just so we get the carapace shape back. Let's bring this back in, see how it fits. And there we go. Immediately we've got more of a kind of verticality to the torso. Now another thing that I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to use a little bit more pinning. And the reason for that is because I want this to sit like here. Um, I don't think I've got quite enough. It doesn't feel like I've got enough area here just to stick it on. So I'm actually going to drill a hole into the bottom of this torso. And I said I don't do enough pinning and I just do feel like I'm overcompensating in this particular video. And let's just get make sure we get that lined up how we want it. So it's slightly forward and I need to drill it in slightly forward into this legs as well. Okay, so if we just get a nice deep hole in that and we can bring in our wire again. Just gonna clip a small amount off there. So the body's actually hollow, so I can get away with gluing in a little bit more than I did last time. As I don't need to drill in the full length, I can just drill in enough. Make sure that's all the way in. There we go. Then hopefully that should Let's just clip that down a little bit. And then if I... Yep, that looks about right. And if we just add a bit of super glue here too. And I'm going to glue a little bit down at the back bottom there as well. Some extra strength. There we go. So now we have a bit more of a vertical looking body, something which is a little bit closer to, let's bring it back, what we have here. And this is the great thing about some of the Tyranid conversions, especially these kind of like, um, I have a little bit of knowledge about the law and how certain one, certain Tyranids are based around particular uh, genus types. And I think Lictors probably come from the same family as Warriors, which is why they are very similar, which is basically what allows us to do this conversion today. Okay, so we've got our body, and we need to start adding some weapons to it. We need to start adding the iconic weapons of the Lictor. Now, luckily for us, the Warrior Sprue comes with these rending claws. Those are pretty much spot on to what we already have, and we can basically just glue those straight on. These can just go straight into here, no problem at all. We can get those in right now. Super simple. Obviously not that simple. Let's get the. I'm trying to adjust, uh, trying to take on a pose that shouldn't be taken here. There we go. So he does look a bit odd at the moment, considering he's got these really low arms, but obviously once we add in the the, the proper kind of, I forget what they're called, but these, there is um, kind of, I can't remember what they're called, the ones that go over the top. Once we add those in, it'll look a lot more lictory, lictor-like. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think what we'd go for next. I think we can we can probably go straight into the thing. And you know what? Actually, this this conversion has been a lot quicker than I thought it would be. But hopefully, we can we can um, probably go through a little bit, spend a bit more time on. Let's go for the head. Let's go for the head next. So I'm going to put that to one side. Just let those arms to dry. So again, 
this head is quite a bit different. Now, if I was using parts from uh, another kit, then I could easily use one of the Tinner Gene Sealer kit heads, the ones with the, the, the feeding tendrils, and I could cheat, I could use that, no problem whatsoever. But I did say that I was only gonna use components from this kit, so we need to be a little bit more clever with what we use. So I've got my Tyranid head here, um, and I've got the little kind of face of the tongue sticking out there. And one of the things we want to do is to basically trim this down. The Lictor head is a little bit more like, I suppose like a gaunt head, it doesn't have the same kind of uh, armored carapace at the top, so this needs to be removed. So we need to think about how we're gonna remove this, keeping that structure there, and also keeping it looking um, realistic. So I think if I start trimming away this kind of this carapace and keep it close against the head, I'll get something that looks a lot more like a lictor head. So we're going to start clipping that away. And again, I'm just going to follow the line of the head here. Just try to make some cuts a little bit further out and that gives us a little bit more options to trim things back in should we need them. So I'm going to trim there just so I can get my clippers in. Move this first section. So let's clip that bit off there, and then we can clip that too. It's going to look very strange from the top, but hopefully once we've filed everything down and trimmed it all down, it'll look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to about, just to about the front here, I want to keep these, these front two sections of the carapace intact for the time being, and just trim the rest of it away. Okay, so the head is looking a little bit more like a lictor head, a little bit more kind of lictor scale. Um, but these carapace at the top is a mess, so we need to bring back the definition there. So first thing I'm gonna do is just, just smooth everything down just so we can see what we're working with here. So, uh, um, is it Aaron or Aaron? Since the uh, genus is mutable, then this conversion is alternate lictor forms is pretty standard for Law of the Tyranids. Having this muto form of lictor is not surprising and a nice addition. There we go, see? It's always nice when the law backs up a conversion. And I think my, my whilst my knowledge of Tyranids and how they work is fairly limited, um, I think I know just about enough just to kind of be able to get, get away with this one. But I think, yeah, I think when you've got um, Tyranids, I think you can say that obviously these these creatures mutate for to deal with threats that they encounter. They they evolve very quickly, and as a result, it would it, it's kind of understandable, I suppose, if you have different forms of variations depending on the planets that they're on, the, um, the enemies that they're going up against. So yeah, it's always nice to know that I've got some law justification behind. My conversions. So thank you for that. So I should mention as well before I inevitably forget that I do have a Discord server. And whenever I do a live stream or a video and I actually do remember to mention my Discord server, then we always get a bunch of new members and it's always good to see those members popping up. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Discord server. There should be a link to it in the description below. There is a whole bunch of great people on there, very supportive, very helpful if you have any questions. And there's a few different groups, so depending on what you're into, if you're into talking about lore, if you want to share your finished pieces or you like conversions, there are different groups for different people. So yeah, check it out. We also have different... Um, what they're called roles that's it we have different roles depending on what you're good at if you do like um if you like to convert and use some pretty cool conversions you get like fabricated uh, priests and things like that so i actually have my discord open right now Let's see if anyone has joined already no not yet but yeah i am on the discord uh, i do pop on there myself probably not as often as i should do so i do apologize for that but yeah it's it's pretty cool place just to kind of for everyone to be talking together at the same time. So we just had two new members pop up. I'm guessing they are watching the stream currently, so that's um, 
Viper Blaze and Grawl the Hermit. Okay, so we've shaved this down a little bit. We've got a little bit more of more of a slimline, a streamlined head for our Lictor. Just need to make sure that we get it even on both sides. We also had um, heretical cosplayers just joined. We have Niet Grappig 101 and Gongplonk have just joined. So welcome. It's just it's always funny. Just to, as soon as I actually remember to actually mention Discord, it gets a, it gets a bunch of people. And I actually really forgot to include the link in the description for a long time, but I've added it in as like a standard template now. So hopefully, future videos should always have that link in there. If you're on my, uh, if you're a supporter on Patreon as well, there is a special little Patreon role that pops up, and you get to be called an Imperial Noble. And there's a little, there's a little nice little room specifically reserved for my Patreon supporters. And I think if you basically link your, if you link your Discord to your Patreon, then um, you'll get that role automatically on the Discord server. But if you are on Discord and you support me on Patreon, then just drop me a message on Discord. Um, and I can sort that out for you. So, I think we're getting that. So we've got we've got a head which is a little bit more streamlined. If I just bring the body back in now, we can kind of see that we're getting a little bit more closer to that lictor appearance. Now, one of the things that I actually I wasn't sure if I was going to do because I've got a little bit more time than I thought actually is let's just bring in the reference picture again. If you look at the head, it's not super clear on here, but just to uh, the left of where the eye is, you can see a few little holes in there. And those are, I don't know what they're, probably breathing holes or something like that. So I'm just going to try and recreate those. I'm going to drill some small holes into the sides just to help to recreate that effect. Now these one millimeter holes are a little bit too small. But that's not a problem because we can, we can remedy those in a second. Let's get that. Trim that down just so I can pop uh, another hole in there. So what I'm actually going to do before I do that is just to create a little bit of a ledge for the carapace. At the moment, it's all very, very smooth. So I'm just going to use this blade here just to kind of score a groove in there, just so that um, if I come to paint this, I've got a little bit more of a physical definition between the carapace and the head. You can see it just forming there. This is. This is why it's important to use a sharp knife, guys. Just so you can do things like this. There we go. So we're looking a little bit better already. A little bit more turn of light. So let's just finish off with that third hole on this side, and then I'll have a look at the next side. So this, when you're actually limiting yourself to one kit, this is kind of what ends up happening. You end up um, having to be a little bit more creative and see where you can make adjustments to the components that you've got. And it's quite a nice little challenge because sometimes there's usually, usually there, there's a component that you can just use. But if you're limited to using components in a kit, then you do have a slightly more limited palette, I suppose. There we go. So we have the three little breathing holes and we can repeat the same process on the other side. So first of all, I'm going to um, just score that line in first. So we're gonna start off about here, there we go. So, also welcome to Scarecrow in the Discord server as well. So let's get make sure that we get these lines properly. So this is just kind of 
I've kind of got one for each carapace piece, so if I just line them up roughly the same. So if I pop on there for now, the first one, and then the second one over here. Oh, I might have moved that one a bit by accident. Oops. Oh man. <laughs> this particular tuner has got a little bit of mutation. This breathing hole on the left side is slightly higher. Are these breathing holes or were they ears? Do tuners have ears? Let's make those a little bit bigger. And there we go. We have a very rough, very rough and ready kind of turned head. I'm just going to trim this down a little bit just to give a little bit more definition to these plates. And you can do a lot with, with painting with these kind of things as well. Once you paint these, then this kind of definition will be a lot more um, apparent than it currently is just in its bare plastic form. So we have the head. We have the slightly more kind of elongated, streamlined head, which is a lot more in keeping with that lictor appearance that we wanted. So... Breathe in here in the same hole. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe Tyranids can do that. I mean, we can smell and taste out of the same holes. So, yeah. So, bring this on here. We can start to see that it's kind of getting a little bit more lictory as we go along. Um, now, the next problem that I had, this is another problem with using the parts from this kit, is obviously those feeder tendrils. Now, the feeder tendrils are super easy if you just want to use parts from the gene sealer kit as i've already mentioned but if you're just limiting yourself to one kit and also not only that but also i'm trying not to use components that i don't have three sets of um or at least i'm only trying to use components i have three sets of and if i do i'm only using one set of those so we have this kind of this whip thing what's it called what's the official name of it uh lash whip so we have the lash whip and one of the things that I, oh man i just dropped something it's okay, we were good. Um, this kind of little hook thing here, this is close enough, I think, close enough to give the appearance of feeder tendrils. And I reckon, actually, I just had a brainwave. Let's grab a sprue. I reckon as well, if I were to use, um, yeah, we do actually have enough of those to use them. Okay, we have the little, what are they called, flesh hooks. So we have several sets of flesh hooks on the sprue. There's like two sets on here. There are three sets on, on here. And there's another set on here. So there's quite a few sets there. Six altogether. Um, yeah, six of them. So I can use two sets of these and still have enough to do the rest of the conversion. So let's just clip away a couple of these. And I'm going to use these basically as proxy feeder tendrils. So we do lose that kind of Cthulhu-esque appearance, that Lovecraftian appearance to uh, this by getting rid of those more, more gribbly bits, I suppose, is the uh, technical phrase for it. But I actually think that these look a little bit more similar to if you've seen Starship Troopers and the big brain bug thing at the end, and when it kind of uses that little spike to suck out the memories of somebody, I think it... We can kind of say that, yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're going for here. We're going for the um, Starship Troopers Brain Bug Mind Spike effect. Okay, so I'm just just cleaning these up. We've got we're making good time for this particular. Um, this particular stream, so I don't mind spending a little bit more time doing these kind of things. Um, Discord server, we have Calderis oh, Koskanaiken. Can you just guys just have like normal names like R Smith 415? That's a name I can pronounce. Thank you. Thank you, R Smith 415, for having a name I can easily pronounce. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, Discord server, sorry. Yeah, so if you just joined, again, check out the Discord server. Um, I do pop on there from time to time. So, yeah. Mm. 
yeah, I would highly recommend Starship Troopers. And I think one of the things you need to do when you watch um, Starship Troopers as well, which a lot of people don't kind of get, um, is that you kind of need to view it as uh, satire rather than being... I mean, it's a cool action film anyway. If you just take it on its own merit, it's a pretty cool action film. There's a bunch of um, kind of Imperial Guard-esque warriors taking on Tyranid-esque bugs, that they call them. Um, so it's pretty cool for that. But one of the theories that I actually quite enjoyed was that the whole film is actually a kind of a recruitment video, like a propaganda film that's actually was made within the universe of Starship Troopers. So it's quite a nice little take on it. If you view it like that, then it's, it, it kind of adds a little bit more depth to the film. But as an action film, it's pretty cool as well. And that and Event Horizon are almost like um, unofficial 40K films. If you've not seen Event Horizon, highly recommend checking it out. It's basically it's it's basically what happened with like the early uh, Imperial ships that navigated the warp without the Gala field, and the warp kind of inhabited the ship. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy movie. There we go. Let's just so now I've, now I've trimmed those up a little bit. See what we can do here. So I'm definitely going to use this. Um, lash whip kind of thing. Um, I'm going to remove the tongue because I want this to kind of end, be the central part of it. I can probably get that into the mouth like so. And then I can use these just to bulk out the mouth, just to give it a little bit more of a tenderly look. So I'm going to clip the tongue off there. And I'm going to use a knife just to flatten it around. So it's good to see a few regulars in these live streams as well. I keep seeing the same kind of names popping up each time. Thank you for joining me, as always. There we go. Just flatten that out a little bit around the teeth. We won't see it too much. So I reckon if I just trim this now, I'm going to trim it to about a little bit longer than I'm probably going to need it. It just means that I can always trim more away if I need to later on. So if I just pop this into the mouth see that's a little bit not quite going to fit yet so we need to just flatten this out a little bit more pop the knife in like so smooth it out there we go Okay, so we can pop that in there. I think we've we've filed that. Oh no, we still haven't done it quite yet. So let's just file down these teeth a little bit as well. These teeth are getting in the way. And you know what? I think I'm quite happy with the length that I've gone for there. It kind of is about the right length that we want. That's literally enough. Let's just uh, file back those teeth a bit more. One of the things I always kind of point out in my videos and conversion videos is always trying to do things incrementally. Try not to make a, a cut and then hope for the best. Just make small cuts, make small adjustments. That whole kind of measure twice, cut once kind of thing. But sometimes you can't always measure because you don't know until you actually start making the cut. So just, just cut incrementally. You can always cut away more. It's a lot harder to add the material back. So it's not quite flush against the back there. Uh, let's just trim that back a little bit more. There we go. I think that's working well. There we go. We can just straight up glue this into the mouth now. We have kind of a, like a forked uh, snake tongue effect going on there. So I'm going to glue this section to the head just so I've got a little bit more of something to hold on to. Let's make sure I get this the right way up. There we go. There we 
we go. I think we're getting closer. So if I start using some of these tendrils, I'm thinking I might be able to squeeze a couple of them just in the mouth or around the mouth maybe, just to maybe some of the smaller ones. And that'll just hope, hopefully bulk it out a little bit. I think that'll work quite nicely. A couple more people joined the uh, Discord. We're getting quite a good amount of people joining today, so I'll just make sure I haven't missed anyone. Um, we have Gizwo and Giveface. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to trim these down. I'm just going to trim the shorter ones because we don't really need the rest of them. Everything else is a little bit too long. There we go. I'm going to get the same kind of length from this here. So if we just should just be able to glue these straight in here, I don't think we should need any adjustments. I'm just going to make sure I get the bobs right. I just, yeah, pop a little bit of glue there and a little bit of glue there on the mouth. I should note before somebody inevitably asks, the glue that I'm using here is Plastic Magic and there should be a, oh man, <laughs> there should be a link to it in the description below where you can pick it up from Amazon. Comes this nice little brush that you can use to very precisely add glue to where you need it to go. Ah, let's get the barbs the right way. There we go. It's all about the detail. So it's not quite feeder tendrils, it's a little bit different, but it kind of has that same kind of you don't want this entering your brain and fiddling about with your thoughts and using the intelligence that you've got against you. So if I actually put that on the model, you can start to see that we're getting that, that kind of lick to vibe going on here. There we go. So um, I'm not gonna attach this just yet. I'm gonna leave that to dry. I'm just gonna put that one side and just let that cure. And we can then start to work on the overhead blades. Actually, before I do that, let's, um, no, let's come back to that, actually, because I'll have some parts to use. So the blades themselves, again, we're limiting ourselves because we're using just parts from the kit. And I could have gone ahead and used um, putty here and, and kind of sculpted something. But again, that's not always straightforward for people to do. So we're going to use just components from the kits. Now, we get these... Um, oh, I always forget the two names for weapons. What are these called? I've got the box here. Um, these are called Scything Talons. Just to make sure everything's correct. So we've got a pair of scything talons, and these are great because you can hold them above the head like so, and you get that um, pose. That's the pose that we want. Again, reference photo, you can see that the arms kind of bend back on themselves and the blades appear at the top. So we want to recreate that. So this is great, but these blades are a little bit puny, a little bit too small for what we need. They just look like not quite enough. Now we need something a little bit bigger than that. Luckily, this Tyranid Warrior set also comes with bone swords and you get six of them in a set which means you can use two of them per lick and these are a lot bigger. If I bring in the scything talons you can see they're they're considerably larger and especially if I kind of cut it away you get uh, probably about half the length again on the top there they look a little bit more imposing so if I actually have these on the top they look a bit more like licked arms. The only trouble is, if you look at the arm here, it's bending the wrong way. But if we kind of combine these two components, we can give ourselves something that is actually closer to the lictor that we're trying to create here. Okay, so let's, um, what are we on? Oh, 15 minutes, let's do this quickly. We don't want to over, overrun here. So I'm just gonna make a cut just very close to where this hand is. And I'm going to make a similar cut just here where this little line is. And hopefully they should line up nicely. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this cut because I want to keep that section in place. I'm gonna cut a little bit further away like so. I'm gonna do the same for 
this here. It's, yeah, it's cut away close to the hand for this section. And if I bring these two together, then we can see that they already start to match up quite nicely. We don't need to do an awful lot, but I am going to smooth them down just so we get a better fit. Um, again, I could probably pin these. These would probably work a bit better with pinning. I think the surface is just thick enough to be able to take um, some rod there, but I th I'm kind of conscious of the time I want to get this finished. I've got two of these to do, so let's let's just go ahead without it for the time being, but take it on my advice that you should go ahead and probably pin these if you want to recreate these in the future. So let's just clean that up a little bit more, just so we've got a good surface to glue on, and then we're going to use this as well. Are you going to do some more guard conversions? Because I like the Talon one a lot. Um, yeah, I, I think it, I've got some plans for some Imperial Guard conversions. Um, I've been wanting to do some of the, the regiments, like the, the Praetorians and Mordianine Guard, things like that. Um, but I, I have to use third-party bits for those. And while I do like doing the third-party um, conversion videos, it's also nice to do some just 40k component videos as well. Um, and hopefully... I'll be getting around to doing some more of those soon. I actually don't have any ideas of what to do for this weekend's um, stream, so maybe, maybe we can do some Imperial Guards conversion, Imperial Guard conversions. In terms of actually, Imperial Guards were some of my first conversions that I ever made. Um, they were the first 40k army that I collected, and so I just make slight conversions to um, those Cadians just to. Um, make them go a little bit further, just so they don't have the exact same poses across the model. So if I just glue this to here, and I mount it to the top there, you can see that it actually works quite well. If you wanted it really kind of to fit properly, then maybe if you had some uh, putty, you could redirect the uh, little tendril things that would, were on this blade, and you can make them run down the length of the blade. But I mean, as it stands, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. I think it works quite well. So we're going to need to repeat the same process with the other side here. Again, we're going to be cutting down as close to this hand as we can. How far did I go with that one again? So I didn't quite catch the thumb on that one, so I'm going to cut a little bit before the thumb. And then if I bring in this here, again, we want to keep the cut so we have a little bit of that flat section that goes in the bottom. And again, keep these these kind of things to one side because these are always super useful for future conversions. Don't ever throw their things like that away. If you've got little random bits like this, then you can probably get rid of those. They work quite well if you're doing Tronic War Veterans, things like that. Um, so you could keep them, I guess. Some orc conversions would be nice. Yeah, I um, I quite enjoy doing the tank busters. I've got a few ideas for things, um, especially these kind of videos which try to create plastic versions of kits which are only available in metal or resin. So I think commandos is one of those. Um, what else do we have for orcs that aren't orc units? Is it commandos and... Yeah, I think it's commandos and tank busters are the main ones. But yeah, I think some faction specific ones were mentioned in a previous stream so that'd be nice to do those as well at some point okay let's uh, just smooth this down a little bit more oops drop my file um, I think those should glue together quite nicely now. I don't think I need to make any more adjustments. I think that'll work. There we go. Let's bring that in here. Glue that on. Thanks for joining, Aaron or Aaron Ramsby. 
as I said, if you need to ever drop out in these streams, that's fine. I will always be putting these streams up on to the channel later on. So if you need to watch them back later on, then that's fine. Um, but if you can make the streams, it's always great to have you here. So there we have the the um, things. The um, I have no, I, st I still have no idea what they. Can someone mention them in the uh, the chat for me? Just what those things are called, what those weapons are officially called. Just so I don't look like an idiot, just sitting here going, these things, these weapons, and we can just basically glue these on now, and we can get that iconic pose. So I'm gonna hold this in place a little bit because I don't think this will hold perfectly well. Just hold that thing. Tiger sympathizer, thank you for your help. I don't think they're officially called the things. <laughs> I mean, they can be if, if um, I mean, to be honest, if you were a guardsman, if you were some sort of um, guardsman stationed on Katachin or some other tyranid infested world, then I'm sure you'd probably have, we've got IE blades. <laughs> so we've got, we've got a poll between, we're going to, we're going to have to choose one. So we've got the things, IE blades, blades. Bone swords, scything talons. Biocides, quite like that one. Fire at those things. I quite like IE blades and then maybe you could kind of cut that off with some sort of um, danger fingers. That's another good one. Death <laughs> Um Okay, I think, oh, what am I gonna go for there? Um, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna go for deathsicles. So these are now officially called deathsicles. So if you, if you if you want to think of a name for the um, the rending claws as well, let's go for that one as well. But definitely deathsicles are the winner of that particular one. Uh, okay, so the arms are all glued into place, and we can start to glue on the head now. And that should hopefully finish off the bulk of the look, and we can actually start to see how these how this starts to look compared to, there we go. I think that's pretty much done. Actually, no, it isn't done because it's not super apparent on the image, but behind this guy, there is a tail with a spike on it. Now we do have one of these in the kit and we only have one of them, that's the problem. I think it's meant to be for like the Tyranid Warrior Prime or some sort of like leader variant of it, which is why we only have one of these in there. So I think we need to, let's see what we've got to add a spike to the end, kind of like a scorpion. We've got a few minutes left, so let's let's actually get this finished. So let's pop that over there just for the time being and have a look on the sprue. Now, I think, to be honest, we could probably use this. We could probably use these talons that we've put away. But we need a better way of mounting them, I think. What do we have on the sprue? I'm missing a sprue. There it is. This plastic kit comes with one lictor armed with death sickles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's it's always a case of these these kind of names for things like Tyranids, the Scything Talons, Venom Cannon, Bob Strangler. They're always named by Imperials. They are the human names for them. It's obviously why we can read them. But yeah, why why wouldn't someone call them Death Sickles? Um, so I'm just looking at the sprue, and I think maybe these kind of these venom sacks. I think that's what they are, um, or adrenal glands. Are they adrenal glands? I think they are. Some very 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 um, cobweb memories of reading a very old sixth edition Tyranid Codex coming back to me now. Um, Basically what I'm trying to do is trying to bulk out the tail a little bit. At the moment, if I just went ahead and glued this on, I don't think it would look right. It looks a little bit too, too much, a little bit too glued on. And I would really have liked to have used this component, but again, there's only one of these in the kit, and the challenge is still to make three of them from all the parts in here. It's not that important, I guess. I don't want to go ahead and spoil the look. If anyone has a stat line actually to hand, 
can they is that actually even a weapon option is the thing on is the uh, the blade actually defined as a weapon option if it's not I'm going to leave it but if it is then I need to do it so Um, okay, one of the things I'm actually going to address is the fact that this guy, this this turn is a little bit tall and it doesn't quite fit on. Oh, you know what? I should have probably checked these feet to actually fit properly against the base before I went and uh, glued them on. So, yeah, I can actually have a little bit of overhang there. I was worried that these wouldn't necessarily fit properly, but it, because the base is slightly raised, I can get away with. Let's just move that foot back a little bit. There we go. Let's glue this onto the base just so we have. I have a spike claw right lying next to my fill. This one. Um that could work because this was cut away from the, the carapace on the head. And if I just bring in the other heads, you can see we have similar spikes. Hmm. That'll work. Thank you for the suggestion. I completely missed that one. Sometimes it's good to have a an extra set of eyes looking at the models. Who said that one actually? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Johan. Thank you for your suggestion. I'm just going to let this glue for a second. Please put the bio sack between the legs. This this is PG live stream, guys. This is I've had to actually I've had to declare to YouTube that this hasn't got any offensive content in it. I can get away with with guys being impaled by death sickles, but I think um, having uh, having some venom sacks hanging down between the legs is a little bit too far. I'm going to get demonetized for that. Is it going to, is it, oh man, I'm just going to bring the glue in here just to hold this up. There we go. Let that glue for a little bit. Uh, so I think someone mentioned, uh, Kodak says it's not an option, weapon option for the Prime. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go for this. Let's just trim that down. So I think it's small enough to look right and I should be able to glue it to the tail. So what I'm going to do is just file this down a little bit here just to smooth that out and just gives the slightly better join against the tail and that should be a nice little finale for the video. Again, we've actually managed to finish a conversion spot on an hour. Honestly, if I actually set out to do these not on a live stream, I reckon I wouldn't be able to do them within an hour. But doing them on a live stream is just that extra added pressure. It seems that death scores are also um, catching on in the Discord as well. Um, if someone has a Photoshop handy, I would like you to set up a custom um, custom emote for me, please, if you could. I think one of the, one of the mods in there should probably be able to set that up for you if you can send it to them. I think it's maybe a couple of them online. If not, send it to me and I'll add it in after the stream. I want a deathsicle. I want deathsicles to be in the halls of. I don't know, halls of our <laughs> alongside dead animal bits. That, that's going to be the new thing, deathsicles. Uh, if you trimmed and filed the top of the tail, see again, this is why I enjoy converting with you guys. So thank you very much, Zach Evans. You made a good point there. If I just very carefully trim the top of this tail and make a flat surface, you get a much better surface to which to glue to. There we go. So hopefully, if I just bring this in just to make sure, 
That should glue on very nicely indeed. Oh, where's the tweezers? I'm sure I had them. I need tweezers for this. This is very fiddly. Fall off? No, don't fall off. Do we have it? Do we have? No, it's slightly off center. Let's just uh, adjust that again. There we go. Ah, it slid down the, the tail a little bit. Let's just move that back up again. There we go. Add a little bit of glue just to help it along a little bit. I'm going to be very careful and just leave that alone for a few seconds. Just let that. I mean, I say I'm going to leave it alone, but now I'm going to go and put some more glue on it. There we go. Ah, okay. So I think that is done. I think we have the completed lictor plastic. As you can see here, it's all plastic. All the parts have been taken from the Tyranid Warrior kit and you could build, easily build three of these guys from that kit. Giving you a like saving of about 13 pounds if you were to buy this kit over buying three lictors. So yeah, if you want three lictors in your army, don't bother buying the resin fine cast one. Get a box of Tyranid Warriors and do it this way. Yeah, I think that should work quite well. I was a little bit unsure as to whether or not how, how good it would come out. I think I've got, let's just bring it in. Let's bring in a side-by-side -side comparison there. Let's have a look. I think if I saw that on the battlefield, I definitely believe it's a lictor. And sometimes that's the main thing. You've got to make sure the conversions are close enough so that an opponent could, couldn't argue that it's not the right thing. So yeah, there we go. We have our Tyranid lictor conversion armed with a pair of deathsicles. So, <laughs> someone has um, someone has uh, queued the next section of the stream, which is tangent time. Um, this is just the end of the stream where I just kind of don't want to stop talking and it just ends up being tangential and we go off on a tangent. So, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to get rid of all, get past all the, the normal stuff for it. So uh, big thank you to everyone for watching the stream. It's uh, always great fun to uh, sit here converting with you guys. I have about, what, about 200 people coming in and watching these videos at the time. So it's great to see uh, a bunch of you guys, to chat with you guys, to interact with you guys, have a bit of fun as well. Um, so yeah, huge thank you for everyone who's joined. I will be running streams probably every Wednesday and every Saturday, hopefully. Um, doing these conversions, maybe doing some painting, things like that. Keep an eye on my community page. I'll do announcements of what I'm working on. I'll also be doing some polls. Um, make sure you check out Discord as well. If you haven't already, make sure you join it. There's a link in the description below. Lots of great people on there. And if you are a supporter of me on Patreon, big thank you for doing that. And there is a special um, Patreon only channel in there. If you have joined my channel, then drop me a message. Join Discord, drop me a message with your uh, channel membership name and I can add you to that group as well. I don't want it just to be a Patreon thing that anyone who supports me can can join that. Um, there's also Bitsbox. Big thank you to those guys. I didn't necessarily support this video because I used just one kit, but the kit I bought here was from Firestorm Games. There's an affiliates link in the description below. Click on that buy something, a little bit of money comes my way, it costs you nothing extra, and it means I can do more of these these kind of things. So big thank you to everyone. So yeah, huge, huge thank you to everyone who's um, who's joined me again today. Um, conversion's probably gonna be 
the main topic of these future streams just because I think most people tend to enjoy them. I feel like I've got a little bit of a, a theme going with the channel now. I'm really enjoying doing these uh, conversion videos. It's my favorite part aspect of the hobby, so it's great to share with you. Uh, with you. Uh, a few people just said bits box options uh, aren't available. Just um, drop those guys a message on Facebook. I think uh, they're, they're pretty they're pretty good. So if, if you get enough people wanting components, they can they can do orders and they can get bits in there. So give them give them a shout. Just get in touch with them. Um, what else do we have? Does Bitsbox have high shipping to the US? They are UK based, so um, possibly there are probably other Bitsbox well Bits resellers. eBay's is a good one to check out, but just just check out the website. I think. The link isn't in the description below, it's bitsbox.co.uk and it has bits with a Z. So yeah. Okay, so I think I think we're gonna round that off now. Um big thank you to all the people who've joined joined the Discord. Um I'll be jumping on there in a second. So if you have any questions about the stream, uh this video will be going live onto my YouTube channel. So if you have any um bits you want to cover, go back over, then they'll be on there. And so I want to say a big thank you from me and a big thank you from the Deathsicle Lictor. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching.